Okay. So, uh, so what is uh, nature of decision making? What is this all about decision making? Decision making involves the selection of a course of action yeah, from among two or three more possible alternatives in order to arrive at a solution of a given problem. Simple example. Uh, now you want to go from here to Kuala Lumpur. There are three ways uh, road that you can uh, go to Kuala Lumpur. From Seramban, there's the old road which pass through the mountain, Pajam, everything down there. You still reach Kuala Lumpur. Then we have the highway, the, the old highway, Seramban Kuala Lumpur highway. Then we have another one, Lekas highway. Start from Jalan Jelebu there, eh? straight to Kuala Lumpur. I give you an example. So there's three roads leading to Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. You need to make a decision. Which one you want to use to go to KL? This is a good example. So if I'm the case, I will make, I have to do, to discuss, I mean if you're discussing with your friend, which these three route that you should follow to Kuala Lumpur. So, very simple analogy, if you want to go maybe let's say to uh, Cheras, then uh, I may suggest that uh, you decide, make your decision to follow the, the new uh, Lakas Highway. Because the Lakas Highway will exit in Cheras. If you follow the old highway, can it also go to Cheras. But because of the old road and winding road, you cannot speed. You may arrive but the uh, later stage. Uh, you can go follow also through this uh, the old highway, Seramban Kail Highway. But it doesn't exit to Cheras. It exits direct to Kuala Lumpur. Uh, so these are the three decisions. Uh. You still can uh, go to Cheras with all the three, uh, three highway, using these three highway. But the important thing for you now, which part of Kuala Lumpur you are going to meet up people? Whether in Central Kuala Lumpur, in Cheras, or somewhere else. Uh, so this is contoh lah, example of a decision you have to make from the, what do you call it here, selection you have to make from two or three possible alternative. In this case, we have three possible road uh, uh, analytics, uh, alternative that lead to Kuala Lumpur from Selambat. Simple analogy lah, it comes, uh, it goes to also when we're talking about you want to make decision in the company on several possibility. Okay, so that is what we call it the nature of your decision making. I re explained it very clearly. I hope you can understand it very simply. Okay, without decision making, mandatory functions such as planning, organizing, directing, controlling, and staffing cannot be conducted. We already learned, plan, we already learned. Huh? P L O M C into planning, uh, organization, directing, controlling. So any work you have to do this uh, four function, you need a decision. When you have the decision, then you can do the planning. You can do, do the organizing. You can do the controlling and so on. So without decision, specific decision, the management team cannot follow through the managerial function. So that's why we need to make a decision from two or three alternatives. You cannot implement three decision uh, to to do the planning, organizing, and everything because it doesn't work that way. Nobody can work that way. You have to either three or four. You have to choose only one. Then only you can implement the uh, function. Decision making is a cumulative and consultative process and should support organization growth. Decision making is not one person. If one person, then it cannot be a decision because he so he make his decision. Decision making must be two or three people management in the company, which discuss the alternative and make the decision. So that's where it's a cumulative, two or three or more people, yeah? not one person. The main function of every management is making the right decision and seeing them through to their logical and through the execution. So around two, three, four, five alternative, you need to think one is the right decision. It may be wrong because if it's already perfect, correctly right, 
then no need to discuss and make decision, right? So every decision doesn't mean it can be right. It also can be wrong. But you have to make the decision out two or three alternative. Then you have to see through the decision through your planning, organizing, tracking, control, controlling, stopping, and so on. So does it mean that you make decision is a right decision? Sometimes it's also wrong decision. Sometimes you fail also. If every decision is right and it's going to success, then there's no problem in this world. Everybody will sleep at home. Every management decision also affects employee moral performance, ultimately influencing an overall business performance. Of course, when you make decisions, sometimes uh, staff have to work extra, have to go back late, or kind of thing. Yeah, this all will affect the employee moral or kind of things. But then you have to address it in a different situation. Decision have to make, and you have to complete the goals. The importance of decision making in management is immense, as the business policy and strategies as adopted ultimately affect the company output and performance. As I said just now, you make a decision. You know, you make a wrong decision, indicate at the end of the day, you won't achieve the goals. In this case, you may not achieve the output, the performance that you want to make. So, any decision is very immense, that means it's very, very important. Yeah? Wrong decision means wrong, that means you lose money. Decision making is the coherent and rational process of identifying a set of feasible alternative and choosing, of course, I okay, we already explained that, it's just uh, repeating it. Type of decision, decision making, problem solving, a continuous process of analyzing, considering various alternatives. I will explain. There's nothing much down there. There are two basic type of decision. Uh, program decision, non-program. Okay, let's see what it is. Managers make problem solving decision under three different conditions. Certainty, risk and uncertainty. As I said just now, not every decision is certain. All managers make decision under each condition, but risk. And uncertainty are common to be more complex and unstructured problem faced by top manager. So what we're trying to say, decision, normally you make, everybody agree under this condition, we can make decision. But when you're implementing, there's a risk factor that you doesn't see when you make the decision. You can only see the risk factor when the implementation side. Uh, so this is uncertainty, that is the problem uh, implementing any decision which is common and sometimes it becomes more complex and sometimes it becomes unstructured as you go along implementation the decision. So this is what we're trying to explain. Doesn't mean, as I said, every decision, you can run it smoothly, you can be achieved because of this uncertainty, risk, uh, hurdles, problems that you will count, encounter during the implementation, the organization and the, and the production time. Decision I mean under condition of certainty when the manager has perfect knowledge of all information needed to be made decision. Well, there's sometimes you have all the, let's say you want to cook. You want to make a very special dish today. You need 10 ingredients. You have all the 10 ingredients. Of course, with all the 10 ingredients, you make, can make a very good decision how to cook and how the food is going to taste because you have all the ingredients. So in this case here, we said decision are made under condition of certainty. If the ingredients for the decision is certain, um, that's for sure, that will be the decision made can be implemented easily and uh, there's no uncertainty. That's one condition. Lah. As I said, just now how you want to do your cook, you have all the ingredients. But if you have only 9 ingredients out of 10 ingredients, uh, that's where the decision making you still have to decide but you only got nine ingredients you still need to cook you still need to eat this possibility that your food is not going to be as good as what you plan yeah this is what we're trying to explain very simple analogy i give to you yeah? this condition is ideal for problem solving the challenges uh, in, is simply the challenge is simply to study the alternative and choose the best solution so when you make decision, as I said just now, it's not perfect. It's only one of the best alternatives that you have to choose. You have four. Doesn't mean that all the four you choose one is perfect. All the four is not perfect. What, what is the best alternative of the four? Uh, this way the decision making is important. This way is the business in the company is all about. If everything is clear, black and white, then you don't need to have decision. Everything is 
clear your mind why you need to discuss for example why you go to court why you need a judge because the law is not clear you said white the other said yellow or the said you said blue so you need to go to the judge to see your argument whether the paper is white whether the paper said it's not white purple or kind of thing so this is where you need the judge to make decision here you make your decision in your company so this simple similar reason reasoning i give it to you yeah all, all opening as example decision i mean under condition of certainty when the manager has perfect knowledge this is the same thing yeah. when the problems tend to arise in a regular basis a manager may address them through standard or prepared response called program decision well so if we know that the same problem come over and over again for example in the production of a furniture in a factory suddenly something uh, broke down and that machine always broke down so you know the problem of this machine maybe because of old or because of whatever thing so it's like a program problem that, that machine so you know that once the machine break down you know what to decide already uh, this one we call it program decision because it's always there for many times you know, for many months already structured problem are familiar straightforward and clear with respect information needed to solve all that some other problem you have uh, encountered before we resolve it uh, so when the problem come again you just use the old uh, ways of solving it then we call it structured problem nah, because it's already there a manager can often anticipate this problem and plan to prevent or solve them well since they have been repeating the same problem even the mechanic and manager can anticipate for example in my furniture factory i know you have the 1000 uh, production of chairs this machine is going to drop broke down for one reason or another so once we complete 1000 uh, pieces of furniture we will do the servicing and maintaining same like your car lah. Uh, they will say if you buy a car your mother or father maybe cry buy a car in future you buy a car they will say you please service your car after 5000 kilometers after the car running 5000 kilometers here what is going to happen the manager or who who are doing the servicing of the car or the production of the car which produce the car has already anticipated after 5000 km show break down should it be problem lah so that's why I said by reaching 5000 you must do your service and maintenance and this a uh, structured problem which you can solve it before even the problem come to the picture you can make decision earlier uh, this way the benefit of uh, decision making risk yeah okay in a risk environment the manager lacks complete information uh, risk only comes when you start implementing your your decision what you're going to make yeah for example you want to make your furniture you need all timber all kind of things to make into the furniture so in in between there's always risk you have you cannot get the supply you cannot get the workers you cannot go or whatever thing yeah so this one you cannot anticipate only when you start production, you start running, then you see the problem, and this way the risk comes to the picture. The condition is more difficult. A manager may understand the problem and alternatives, but there's no guarantee how each solution will work. For example, the manager knows that you need certain component of the furniture, and you need to import it overseas. Yeah? Because you can't get the, the, the parts of the furniture Local here. For example, uh, let's say I produce a chair. So we need the cushion or the cover of the chair which import the material from America. Yeah. So you can't do anything unless uh, you pre-order. Suddenly they, they have problem of manufacturing the cloth in America. They cannot supply to you. So these are the risks you have to take care. Even you know there's a problem. But you cannot do anything because it's out of your control. So risk is fairly common decision, is fairly common decision condition for manager. So yeah, sometimes you have to decide alternatively. In my case, let's say I cannot get the material for my chest uh, seat or cover. Huh? So we have to look maybe local supplier to, do, to, to, to replace it. So this is a risk line. Maybe with the local supplier, the quality is not there, everything, but you need it to complete the furniture. But whether you can sell or not, or have to sell at a lower price, there's a different issue. Lah. We are just talking about risk. Certainty, 
Certainty is a condition under which the manager well informed about possible alternative and yeah, outcome. As I said just now, lah. Uh, like the car manufacturer, they know that certain after 5,000 km, this car will show break will show will break down. So we must get used service. So that is very certain. So you can overcome the problem by making earlier decision. There is only one outcome for each choice. Okay lah. Sometimes like service car. There's no alternative. Either you service or don't service. There's only one choice that you have to take. You don't service, you break down. Uh, you can like say just now the furniture, I cannot get the material from America. We can source it locally maybe. But different quality lah. But like in this case servicing, you only got one choice. Either you service or you don't service. So either you service will be okay or you don't service, you're going to break down. So no choice. When the outcomes are known and their consequences are certain, the problem of decision is to compute the optimum outcome. So, for example, like the give simple example, the chair seat just now, lah, the material for the seat. Yeah? So, you know already this thing, if they cannot supply, you have to look for alternatives, other local supply or from other country. So, you already do your computation. What will happen if you cannot get the original material that you need for your furniture? So all these things, uh, the manager have to prepare the decision making. If plan A don't succeed, what is your plan B? What is your plan C? So this is very important. But if you don't plan, then suddenly you don't get a supply. You don't know where to get your supply for your material to complete. Uh, that's a big problem for the whole factory. The furniture is not going to complete. Yeah? So this is what important decision you have to make. Decision 1, Decision 2, Alternative 3, 4 or 5 to make it your production uh, achieve the goals lah that you want to uh, achieve. Similarly, if there are more than one alternative, they are evaluated by connecting. Well, if there is more one alternative, let's say just now, if I need a supplier for my material for my chair, I cannot get from America, but I can get it from other country, you can evaluate conducting the cost study, and uh, do the due diligence and everything you can choose from other alternatives from many other suppliers yeah the condition of certainty exists is in case of routine decisions such as allocation resources for production payment of wages and salary those fixed costs uh, uh, fixed cost is a uh, certain really salary wages yeah uh, resources materials so this one is not much an issue because the, the cost is already fixed, you just can uh, make decision based on the cost. Let's say, for example, today the factory worker, 10 of them got sick, COVID, cannot work, 10 out of 100 cannot work. So one day is how much the salary. So the, the manager can employ maybe temporary workers for the next one week because of 14 days since these people are under quarantine. So this kind of thing. So you, you do it this way. Here we don't have uh, what you call, you call it, labor pool, labor P O L in Malaysia. You own it, but I, I went to country, for example, in Bangladesh, in uh, uh, India or Pakistan. I give one good example in Pakistan. So every morning they have uh, all the laborers who don't have job will come to one place. There's a pool there. Everybody is sitting down there. So if that day anybody want any temporary staff, they just go down there and employ these people. How many are one? 10, 20? How many days? 2 or 3 days? So they will work. So after finish 1, 2, 3, 6, 20, they will go back to the pool the next day looking for other people to pick it up. Uh, this is where, as I said, is mentioned here that if any, just now if your workers stop not working, easy to go to the labor pool and uh, employ them and uh, work to your factory. But uh, Unfortunately, we don't have that system in Malaysia, so you maybe don't understand that kind of system. But other countries, Africa and everything, they have this system. Those people out of job, they just go to the labor pool or we call it labor market. Lah. Uh, it's a market itself. Lah. Uh, you work for, you, can you work today for me for $10? Or oh, this will say, no, I, I can't. You want to employ me? $15. I'm like, buy barang, lah, buy and sell things also. Lah, yeah? The condition of certainty exists in case of routine decision. Okay, we explain that one. Okay, there is a little ambiguity. Uh, ambiguity and relatively low chance of making any impractical. 
ambiguity ni mean tidak yang tidak tentulah ya yeah? so if we have all this uh, preparation uh, ready so chances that you wouldn't don't have a much of problem okay uncertainty when information is so poor that managers can even assign probabilities to the likely outcome of the notice the manager is making decision in an uncertain environment certain thing certain thing are very uncertain nobody knows huh? so cannot we have the manager have to make this decision right or wrong he only knows at the end of the day but decision still have to make you cannot say that, oh i have to wait i don't know not certain not certain uh, then you cannot do anything because at the end of the day if you don't decide on the uncertainty you're not going to complete the job that you're going to do down there so if you decide so in the end they may achieve the objective or it may not achieve the objective that is the risk yeah this condition is most difficult uh, this kind of condition is most difficult for a manager uh, decision making under condition of certainty uncertainty it's like being to pioneer entering unexplored territory uh, like you jump into the deep blue sea without uh, any life jacket uh, this how it do in business it's not that easy okay please understand business is like going to war uh, whether you are going to live or not live nobody guarantee you if every business is show sure profit everybody do go to business why you work with people why people working until they die for people uncertainty forces manager to rely on heavily on creativity yeah, and solving problem it requires unique and often totally innovative alternatives to existing process yeah so sure we need all this innovative idea kind of thing that's where the manager do if not if everything you need no no, no need to do creativity in innovative then you just employ a robot to become manager lah correct or not why you need people to become manager because you need them to be creativity you have, have uh, how no to solve the problem otherwise we uh, now we have robot we just have point robot to become manager lah if there's nothing to think of kind of thing you understand yeah. Decision making process. The decision making process help managers and other business professionals solve problem by examining alternative choice and deciding on the best route to take. Yeah. As I said just now, you want to go to Kuala Lumpur, where's the best route you want to take? This is again what we explaining just now. Using step by step approach is an efficient way to make thoughtful, informed decision and have positive impact on your organization short and long term goal. So. When you want to make decision, definitely we do it very meticulously. Lah. You have to really uh, look the alternative uh, step by step each of the uh, possibilities, the route that you want to take. For and then you also have to look is whether this alternative for the short term, uh, medium term, and also the long term. Sometimes you can't make decision that fit for all. Yeah. You can uh, give one uh, decision. You can fit for all the short term, medium, and long term. So sometimes you make have to make decision for short term different, mid term different, long term different. Okay. The business decision making process is commonly divided into seven steps. Okay. Managers may utilize many of these steps without realizing, it, but again, clearer understanding of best practice can improve the effectiveness. Okay, lah. Just more detail. How you want to do the we we explain here the seven step one identify the decision the first step to making right decision recognizing the problem of opportunity and deciding to address it okay then number two you gather the information you must have all the information for example just now I said you want to cook you need ten, ten ingredient you have to get gather ten ingredient to in order to produce the food that you want to make so same thing like here yeah gathering information. Uh, Identify alternative, then also you have alternative, as I said just now, you want to Kuala Lumpur, there are three road, so you have to consider which alternative you want to go. So this is the thing that you have to present in your uh, meeting before you decide. Then four, with the evidence. Yeah. If each step, you need to evaluate lah, feasibility, acceptability, desirability and all so on. Kena timbang lah, how whether the evidence that you gather just now, uh, uh, is worthwhile to use uh, it for your decision making. For example, again, I said you want to cook. Whether the 10 ingredients that you gather is the best that you're going to produce the, the dishes you want to do, or you have to change the ingredient. 
to buy different ingredient. Same 10 ingredient, but better quality maybe, or whatever kind of things that you need to produce your uh, product. So here is same thing, the evidence that you need to use before you can evaluate the feasibility and acceptability for your decision making. Choose among alternative. Again, we said just now, you once you have all the evidence in your in your in the front of your table, then you have to choose all alternative two or three, four that is available in your uh, analogy just now. Six, take action. Yeah, next step, you have to take action. They cannot be say all these four alternative. We don't know how to take action. You go back to square one. You go back and sleep. Cannot. All the four alternative, five alternative. You have to think which one you think is the best alternative to take the action. Yeah. Seven, once you take the action, then try to review back the decision you have to make. Make it sure, double sure, triple sure. This is the best alternative out of four or five alternatives. Oh, well, then the next step is to implement it and hopefully, inshallah, you, you succeed. Yeah. Okay, common challenges uh, decision making. What are the challenges that normally for decision maker? Although following the step outlined above will help you to make more effective decision. Yeah? Just now the seven one is a, the seven given is a very good base. Lah. There are some pitfall to look out for. So there's some also problem. There are common challenges you the, sorry, here are common challenges you may face along with best practice to help you avoid them. So number one, having too much or not enough information. So as I said, your ingredient is not enough. So maybe your decision you make will not be correct. Apt, eh? apt. Misidentifying the problem uh, again. Sometimes you don't understand really the problem, the the real issue. Normally we uh, we fight over the real issue. One party said this is the problem. The other party said no, this is not a problem. It's another problem. Uh, if you misidentify the real issue or the real problem, uh, then you, I mean. Once you start with the wrong road, you will reach into the wrong decision. Yeah? Three, overconfidence of outcome. Some of them say, oh, this is the alternative. Easy. We just take this decision. Uh, they don't even go in detail to look into the, the decision they make. Uh, or we call it, they make haphazardly the decision. Because for, for overconfidence unnecessarily, and then you also make a wrong uh, decision. Okay, then we have this called group decision. Group decision making, commonly known as collaborative decision making, excavation faced with individual collectively more choice from alternative before them. Well, basically, basically, let's say in production of car, so there are many division. So each division have their own uh, sort uh, problem kind of thing. So to solve the problem, every division have to come together for a meeting to make a group decision, they call it. Yeah? So group decision normally will affect big, big company, lah, not small company. Uh, if a small company, like in, uh, in uh, uh, you can't are opening a cake house, so you need a group decision to make a decision. Maybe a few of the staff can make decision already. Here group decision, we are talking about multinational, big company, international company. Yeah? So here is a different level of uh, decision that we are looking or we are discussing. The decision is then no longer attributed to the individual group member as well individual or social group process like social influence corporate decision. So I mentioned just now, it's not small group, it's going to be group, uh, big group decision. Decision made by groups are mostly different from those made by individual. For example, group tend to make decision that is more extreme than those made by individual members or individual tend to be biased. So normally, yeah, we're talking about group decision is a, is a, in a in a big organization. So the some of the decision they make must be very extreme, yeah, so that they can implement it. Not that uh, uh, there's no worry about the decision because it's decided by so many people. Whether they're going to achieve it or not, it wouldn't affect individual or a small group of people. Whereas decision made by one person or two, three person, they always worry. 
if the decision uh, is going to be not wrong, not achieved at the end of the day, the end of the day they will blame. The people will blame them. So they are always looking, uh, looking for a uh, way out, trying to not to make a uh, decision so that they worry themselves to be uh, at fault or to be blamed later. Whereas a big group, they together make decision with uh, big numbers, so they're not afraid them to be blamed when you decision um, uh, any any uh, objective is not achieved at the end of the day. So they can they can have a make more extreme decision. I mean, take more bigger risk because if it fails, it does not affect anybody. That's what I'm trying to say. Advantage of a uh, group decision, synergy. is the idea that whole is greater than one. Well, sure, two or three hits is better than one. Lah. Yeah, when a group makes decision collectively, judgment can be more powerful. Yeah? As I said, then we have more hits, it's better, two or three hits is better than one. Eh? And then also sharing information. So we've got more people, have different uh, expertise, different background, different experience. So everybody can share their own uh, information to make the perfect or maybe make, can make a better decision. Distribution responsibility, disadvantage. Okay, disadvantage of uh, decision making. Group decision making result in distribution of responsibility that result of lack accountable for outcome. As I said just now, when too many people make decision, they don't worry to make mistake. Yeah, uh, because it doesn't affect them personally or two or three of them, two or three of them. So because of that, they can make extreme uh, decision, and uh, if it fails, that's not. No one will be responsibility. So that's why we say here, the disadvantage is a diffusion of responsibility because no one is going to be really affected with the wrong decision at the end of the day. So that's also one of the disadvantages of group decision. Low opportunity, opportunity, of course, as I said, because of uh, nobody really focus whether the decision is going to be going to work or not. So out of 10 decision, maybe 6 fail, 4, four okay, because uh, nobody bothers whether it's going to make the decision, uh, decision going, to make into, going to succeed or not. So because of that, there may be low efficiency of the, uh, of the result of the decision making by group decision. Group thing, one of the biggest disadvantage of perspective, group decision, making a group thing. A group thing is another problem because to... <laughs> They said too many heads spoil the soup also lah. Eh? Dia cakap tu, dia cakap ya. Yeah. So, also there's another problem, disadvantage lah. Uh, as I said, we're talking about advantage and disadvantage. In anything, there's always positive and negative. You can have a perfect. If there's perfect, then we are not in the world. We are in heaven now. Yeah. So, there's always plus and minus here and there. But we just need to know lah. It is psychological phenomenon that occurs with a group of people in which the wish of for harmony and conformity result in illogical and divergent decision making. Uh, they trying to explain. We trying to explain because of the group thinking. Uh, so many hits come with the group. I will give you one example. Uh, funny analogy. You know. uh, I got one friend. Friend. He's a professor in one public university in uh, Malaysia. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I met him. He's a, one of the professors down in the university. So one day I met him, he joined uh, oil and gas company. Lah. He's my friend, oil and gas company. So I said, Professor, why you are very highly academic and uh, you have a good place uh, in the university, working down there. <laughs> why you going to join the company now, uh, running oil and gas kind of thing? This is basic commercial. You don't really need a very high thinking, you know. To become professor, you need uh, must be very smart thinking. But running this business, you need you need a professor to <laughs> run a business. So what is it that well in the you listen what you say, you know? In the university, there's so many heads when they're meeting. Let's say when they're meeting in the faculty, law faculty maybe. So all the head of law faculty is there. All are smart, fella. Everybody will talk. <laughs> I say everybody will talk and give the idea. Everybody give idea, different, different idea. And then only three hours meeting, there's no decision. 
This is a real story, you know. I'm telling you now. Uh, here is we talking about theory. I'm talking the real I mean. So because of that you got fed up. Say why should I sit in a meeting hours and hours, and there's no decision making. There's no 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 nobody. Nothing is really decisive to be implemented. And then they will bring back another next meeting. Don't know when. Is it? So because of that, a lot of things are holding back. And that's why you can see in public university, they are not as good as the private university. If the public university are very good, there's no need. If the public university is so good, I think there's no need private university. Why do you need private university? Uh, one of the reasons uh, why private university thrive, why private university can succeed. Because private university work faster than the public university. That's my view. Uh. Maybe you can check. With your father or mother, whether I'm right or wrong, I'm just telling. You. So because of too too much it spoils so lah. Yeah. Uh, so this is about group thinking lah. I give you a better example than you read them there. Like, yeah. Group decision making technique. In order to eliminate group thing and group shift from group, we can use different technique lah that will help us to collaborate. Well, you have yeah all this technique lah during the meeting. That's why they got they have the brainstorming, normal group thinking. Uh, what is brainstorming? You can read down lah. Everybody give their own brain lah. <laughs> As I said just now in the NUC, everybody give their own brain. They storm like hell. Nothing come. <laughs> and everybody. Uh, normal group thinking technique is similar to brainstorming except the approach will be more structured. Okay. That's a, uh, that's a summary as I told just now. The objective today. So thank you very much. I uh, won't take much long so that you can discuss for the uh, in the class lah, yeah. Okay, so my go for